Right now, Madison Alders are pitching an idea to offset costs of a proposed wheel tax for low-income residents. And the Republican Senate Majority Leader says he does not plan to debate gun control legislation at all during the special session the governor has called. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Tuesday afternoon. Cooler, more showers today. Let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. Hi, Chris. Hello, Mark. Things have certainly been windy. I hope you didn't lose any hats today. I lost pretty much all my hair the moment I stepped outside. I kid, but we are certainly going to remain on a windy side all day long. Here's some of the peak wind gusts that we have seen. Monroe, 48 miles per hour. Mineral Point, 43 miles per hour. We're going to see these strong wind gusts really persist as we go throughout tonight. And then it's going to take until Wednesday that we finally begin to see some of those wind gusts relax somewhat. But we still do have that wind advisory, folks. That is going to go until 7 o'clock with wind gusts of 40 to 45 miles per hour, if not greater. We're also sticking with the cloud cover along with the icy or isolated spotty showers at times. But by the time we get you towards Wednesday, some changes begin to arrive. I think we'll see a little bit of sunshine before perhaps another Round of cloud cover and some slight chances for showers. But Wednesday will at least be a couple degrees warmer. We'll talk about the rest of the weekend. Maybe even get a little sneak peek at Halloween coming up in Maine weather. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Madison Alders say a $40 wheel tax is necessary, but they want to help offset costs to low-income residents. The Finance Committee passed a budget amendment last night that would pull $100,000 from the transportation budget. The money would be reallocated to people who use food stamps and pay the wheel tax in the form of gift cards. The full council still has to approve the wheel tax. The Finance Committee also approved funding for a police oversight position. That position was recommended by an ad hoc committee that's been analyzing the department for the past four years. Advocates say it's meant to improve interactions between officers and the community. The police department wanted the Finance Committee to instead fund additional police officers. Vice President Mike Pence is visiting Wisconsin today. He plans to stop in Pleasant Prairie in Racine County to visit Uline. That's a distributor of shipping and packaging materials. There he plans to talk about the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement. He'll also visit Marinette to tour a shipyard and a shipbuilding firm. Pence returns to Washington, D.C. tomorrow night. The strike on General Motors has gone on for five weeks and it could drag on longer if workers reject a tentative agreement reached last week. The negotiating team and United Auto Workers Union leadership are both recommending that nearly 50,000 strikers vote to ratify the four-year agreement. The union was not successful in its efforts to have GM shutter some of its production in Mexico and relocate it to the U.S. Results of the vote will be released Friday evening. The impeachment inquiry continues today with the deposition of Bill Taylor. He's the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine. It was Taylor who raised red flags about the president's decision to hold up military aid to Ukraine. In a text message, he wrote, quote, I think it's crazy to withhold security assistance for help with a political campaign. That is a very important statement from a very credible person. And I think that we need to understand everything that happened before he sent that text and everything that happened after. Ambassador to the EU Gordon Sondland replied to Taylor's text, quote, I believe you are incorrect about President Trump's intentions. No quid pro quo, quid pro quos of any kind. CBS News has learned Sondland testified last week that he sent that response only after talking with the president. President Trump has put Republican lawmakers on notice that he expects them to stand with him during the impeachment process. More local news now. Wisconsin Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald says he will not hold hearings or debate gun control bills. Governor Tony Evers called a special session to consider universal background checks and red flag bills. Fitzgerald told reporters that, quote, the support's not there to tackle these two issues. He plans to convene the special session, then immediately adjourn it without taking action. 
Attorney General Josh Call confirms Wisconsin is joining 47 other states to investigate Facebook for antitrust issues. In a statement, Call said, quote, when competition is blocked, innovation can be stifled and consumers are harmed. At the core of the investigation is whether Facebook is limiting competition in online advertising and the advertising choices for online advertisers given its dominance as a web search engine. Today at the state capitol, the Wisconsin Alliance for Women's Health is introducing legislation to allow families to take paid leave. Come on through. Share the great news. Them and their families. And so we're going to have a series of speakers today. At the end, we'll have quite a lot of details in it. So if you do need a copy. And, and I would like to thank everyone for being here. Advocates say families lose millions of dollars by taking unpaid leave, taking time off work to care for family members, or paying for child care. Under the bill, people are eligible for paid leave after having a baby, after adoption, or to care for a family member who has a serious health problem. If it's passed, Wisconsin would become the ninth state to enact a paid family medical leave insurance law. With 266 days until the 2020 Democratic National Convention opens in Milwaukee, organizers are filling leadership roles and reaching out to volunteers. We're, le we're learning that Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett and Congresswoman Gwen Moore will co-chair the host committee. Both were instrumental in bringing the convention to Milwaukee. The host committee put out two requests for proposals, one for software to manage thousands of expected volunteers and another for companies to provide digital services. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. If you have an air fryer and still haven't used it for anything more than cooking frozen french fries, then you're in for a treat. Today's recipe is a real game changer. If you have an air fryer, you're either in love with it or you bought it and haven't used it for cooking anything more than frozen french fries. And if you don't have one, <laughs> what the heck are you waiting for? 
air fryers are one of the fastest growing kitchen appliances on the market. In fact, here in the test kitchen, we use ours to make everything from freshly baked cookies to crispy chicken wings. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Greek inspired main dish recipe from our latest air fryer cookbook. Here we have some boneless, skinless chicken thighs that we marinated in a mixture we made by combining some olive oil, lemon juice, garlic, oregano, and a little salt and pepper. Now, we place the chicken in an air fryer and set the timer. As it cooks, the hot air swirls around the chicken, browning the outside while keeping the inside super juicy. Once it's done, we finish it with some sliced Greek olives and crumbled feta. Not only is this fast, but like with all recipes cooked in the air fryer, you can place the basket in the dishwasher, so cleanup's a breeze. The recipe for our Greek Isles roasted chicken is online now, just in time for dinner this week. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found an easy air fried way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. Cooler weather continues, but we have a few sunny days in the forecast. Once the rain clears out, Chris has your first alert forecast next. A major banking firm is diversifying its workforce and helping people get a second chance. And Chipotle is starting up its annual Halloween deal. Diane King Hall has your Money Watch report. Not enough customers were loving it at McDonald's. The world's biggest burger chain says profit was flat from a year ago as it earned $1.6 billion in its latest quarter. Sales did rise to $5.4 billion, but delivery costs cut into its bottom line. In a surprise announcement, Under Armour CEO Kevin Plank says he is stepping down in the new year. Plank founded the company in 1996 as a college student working out of his grandma's basement. COO Patrick Frisk will take on the top job beginning January 1st. 
JP Morgan Chase is looking to level the playing field in hiring by considering candidates with prior criminal convictions. CEO Jamie Dimon says the new policy is an effort to reduce repeat offenders and strengthen the economy by giving a second chance to offenders looking to re-enter the workforce. The nation's largest bank says it has banned the box that asks candidates whether they have a criminal record. And Chipotle is back with its annual Boo Rito deal for Halloween. If customers come in dressed in costume on Halloween, they can get a burrito, burrito bowl, salad, or taco order for four bucks. It is up to Chipotle workers to decide if what you are wearing is a costume. The deal is good from 3 p.m. until closing local time. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King-Hall. Diane, thank you. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up 80 points. The Nasdaq, however, down 10 and a half. The S&P 500 up almost five. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yankee out of the radio barn today. So here are your farm numbers. I'm now for the weather. Chris Reese over the Weather Center. Hang on to your hat. Yeah, that's right. Things are still very blustery out there after an area of low pressure yesterday brought a cold front through here. That same area of low pressure is really hanging tight across northern Wisconsin, and we are so close to it that those winds continue to blow in towards that area of low pressure, keeping things windy across the upper Midwest. In the meantime, we're actually not tracking that much in the way of shower activity. Here's what we're looking at outside right now. And for the most part, it's cloud cover. There may be some drizzle that's too light to show up on radar, but things are still very dreary out there. Here's a live look outside right now at the Edgewater Sky Camera. Of course, the clouds will be sticking around. Temperatures will be cooler with all that cloud cover. 46 is the temperature in Madison right now. Most spots are into the low and mid 40s. Let's talk about the wind, though, because that's likely the true big story as we head into today. Sustained winds upwards of 20 to 30 miles per hour in some spots, and they are going to stay sustained anywhere from about 15 to 30 miles per hour going through tonight and then eventually they'll begin to relax as we head into tomorrow. But it's the wind gusts that are creating some problems. Here are some of the peak wind gusts that we've had since midnight. Just so far today, Monroe, a peak wind gust at 48 miles per hour. In Madison, we've topped out at 35, 39 miles per hour over in Lone Rock. Dubuque, 47 miles per hour. We're going to see these high wind gusts really stick around as we go through tonight. They'll start to wind down later on, probably past seven o'clock or so, and then into tomorrow, we'll finally see them begin to wind down. But because of the wind, we do still have an alert day and that wind advisory that's going to continue until at least seven o'clock tonight. So folks, if you haven't already, it's probably too late, but tie down anything that is loose outside for sure. We're also going to see some of those showers and the cloud cover sticking around, but tonight, we see a little bit of a change as some drier air starts to take over. I think this means we wake up with some sunshine for your Wednesday. It will be cooler. Anytime the clouds clear out, temperatures begin to drop into the 30s at this point of the year. That's likely going to happen, but we'll start the day with some sunshine. That sunshine will last all the way till about 10 o'clock, and then we'll start to see a return of some cloud cover and then an isolated chance of a shower or two as we head into tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a little bit warmer. We'll see those highs into the 50s. More showers are possible tomorrow night, and then we'll dry out again as we head into Thursday, starting out in the 30s, and then we're going to be staying cooler 
into Thursday as well. Now with the up and down weather, I think a lot of folks are kind of curious what Halloween is going to look like. And I want to start out with those Halloween averages. Typically you see a high of 53. You'll, your normal low for Halloween is right around 35. But we've seen some records. We've seen some very wet Halloween. We've also seen some snowy Halloweens. These are the records back in 1960 and 1962. The past couple of Halloweens have been fairly quiet for us, but Temperature wise, it's always been either warm or very cold for Halloween. There hasn't been much medium in the past five years or so. Here's how things are looking for this Halloween. For one, we're going to see a cold shot this weekend. As we head into early next week, another shot of cold begins to gear up over Canada. I think this one's going to have some strength behind it. In fact, this is Tuesday next week. By the time we get you towards the day before Halloween and into the big day, the core of that cold starts to dive down towards the upper Midwest. So if you're you're planning those costumes, you probably want a costume that has a way to incorporate a jacket. The western half of the country will likely be colder than normal as we go through the next six to 10 days at least. By the time we take you through the first stretch of November, those colder than normal temperatures seem to settle over the upper Midwest. In fact, watch this. We get towards Halloween. We are looking at highs in the 40s. And the day before Halloween, highs could really struggle to get out of the 30s with the chance of a mix of rain and snow showers. Ooh, so spooky. Yeah, how about <laughs> that for scary, right? In the meantime, Saturday looks great. We'll see temperatures in the mid 50s and some sunshine. Great, I got some yard work to do. Yes, yeah, Saturday, everybody needs to rake the leaves that blew off this week for sure. <laughs> a lot of them blew, that's yeah. for sure. All right, Chris, thank you. If you need help getting into a healthy eating routine, we have registered dietitian Michelle Schwaders here. She'll answer your calls at 270-9933 right after the break. Welcome back. Registered dietitian Michelle Swader is here taking your calls at 270-9933. If you any health or nutrition questions, now's the time to get them answered. Welcome back to you. Thank you. We have an interesting study about sleep and weight. Yes. 
uh, as we learn more about how complex weight management is, we find that sleep is really involved. And one of the little new studies that have been done looked at our, how our metabolism actually changes. And what they did was they took a group of, in this case, just all 15 men, um, they sleep deprived them for four nights, which is basically just five hours of sleep, and then they gave them a high calorie meal and compared their blood work to when they were rested. And they found that several things in their metabolism markers had changed. Their hunger hormones, the things that tell us both that we're full and we're hungry, were kind of flip-flopped, so they felt more hungry even though they had a high calorie meal. And then at the same time, their insulin went up more than it would have normally, which basically helps the fat storage be faster. And so for a lot of people who maybe don't have a good sleep pattern and they're struggling trying to figure out what's not quite right with their weight loss, looking at sleep is not a bad thing to do. But it's not as simple as saying get eight hours of sleep a night and lose weight. That's true, yes. There's a lot of factors involved, as, again, as we're learning, but things like sleep and stress, and one of the things that's related with sleep and stress is that our body perceives sleep deprivation as a stressor. And when we're stressed, our body's less likely to lose weight. And so anything that we can do to try to encourage good sleep patterns, get some extra sleep. Sometimes it's not always easy with your job, but trying to maybe get some extra naps, maybe sleep on the weekends, um, try to make your sleep environment very welcoming. So what would be a suggestion if someone can't change your sleep pattern? Then, unfortunately, the burden falls on trying to find other ways to relieve your stress and being extra careful with the nutrition. And knowing that you don't have a lot of wiggle room there. Sure. This time of year, people tend to sleep maybe a little longer because it's dark all the time. Is that? But people put on weight in the winter. Right. Yes. <laughs> that we are. On one hand, we're circadian beings, which means we kind of go with the daylight. But on and so this time of year, sometimes people have some trouble with seasonal seasonal affective disorder, which makes them a little more depressed, a little more sad, and that's another thing that will drive people to overeat and emotionally eat. All right. Let's go to Gladys in Madison. Hi, Gladys. What's your question? My question is, what can I eat? as being a diabetic too, because every time I eat anything, my feet swell up. But and I'm on, the, um, I'm on the pills, not the insulin. What could be happening, it could be a couple different things. Um, some people actually respond to high sugar, high processed foods, um, and it actually creates some inflammation in their joints and so if they feel like it's happening in their fingers and their toes and their ankles it could be because it's a processed really high sugar food another thing that could happen isn't necessarily related to sugar at all it just could be it's a salty food and sometimes we don't really realize how salty the foods that we eat could be things like bread and cheese can be on the salty side definitely processed foods can be on the salty side salt too. and sweet stay away all right if you're on the line stay there michelle will talk to you off the air chris has one final check of the forecast for things to remain on a windy side as we go through today. Temperatures are going to be staying in the 40s for those highs. We're staying cool all week, but we'll see some sunshine this weekend. All right, Chris, thank you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4. Have a great afternoon.